Hi guys and welcome. My name is Chris with Daily Dose of DIY and I am doing the 12 Days of Cricut Christmas Crafts. By the end of the 12 days I'll be able to say that really fast. Today I'm going to show you how to make these cute little shaker stockings. I have a free SVG file for you and I'm going to show you how you can personalize it and put the name in it too. These are great to either hang on your tree, you can adjust them to any size you want, or use as gift tags. Super fun and cute. So let's go take a look at the supplies we're going to need to make. Okay, I will link you everything you need in the description down below. I'm going to go over it really quick. You want some foam, double-sided tape, one sheet of cardstock. Um, it depends on how big you make it, but you possibly need two sheets of red cardstock. And this is 80 pound cardstock that you'll want to get. It's a little bit thicker. You're going to need some Velume. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But this kind of paper that is transparent so you can see through it. String if you want to hang it. It's a mess. And then I've got this um, sequins or some chunky glitter or fun stuff you can put in it to make it a shaker. You'll want to cut this, the paper, on a clean light blue cut mat or a well-worn green cut mat. If you have a new green cut mat, it might tear the paper. Of course, you're going to need your Cricut and some scissors to cut. And I believe that is everything except for the free SVG file. Let me switch screens and I will show you right now how you can get that. Of course, I'm going to link this below to you also. So you'll, once you click the link to get your free SVG file, you'll end on this screen and there's a brief video showing how my SVG file works. If you want to view that, click on get my free SVGs and you'll just put in your first name, email, click send my password and we will send it to you right away with the link to the library. So then you will end up on this page once you get that email and you're just going to type that password in or you can um, copy and paste works best if you don't want to forget it. Once you are in, I made this easy for you. Anything in this library is free for you to use. I've got some cheat sheets and tons of SVG files. Once you get to the SVG file heading, everything is in alphabetical order and I put the 2021 12 days of Christmas that we are doing on the top. So you can see there's snowflakes, there is gift tags, and right now we are on the stocking shaker. There will be a picture there soon so you can see it also so it's easy to find. You just click on the pink and if you have a Chrome browser, you'll see it downloading right there in your download bar. If you're using Edge or something else, it may, um, I'm going to get Cricut up while I'm talking, it may give you a pop-up window if you need more help downloading stuff. I have videos and tutorials on the blog on how to do that. Once you get it downloaded and unzipped, we're going to go into Design Space and click the Upload button over on the left. I already have it in here, but you can upload image and then from your downloads folder, just drag and drop it in. Did I get it in there? Drag and drop it in. Oh, I'm trying to, you have to unzip it first. I'm trying to put the zip file in there. Try again. <laughs> I can't really see it. Let me move that, sorry. I. That's my camera control. You can't see it on the screen, but it's blocking my view. Okay, grab and drop the SVG in there. It comes in as a cut image, select upload. And then once you get here, you can select that image and add to canvas. These are, as it comes into design space, about six and a half inches long. So if you want to make it bigger or smaller, you certainly can do that. Um, with these controls, the first thing I'm going to do is ungroup it to you and show you the different layers. This light pink layer over here that was hidden, that is what you want to cut the volume out of. So we're going to cut a back for red, um, an outline in red, and then the pink is going to be your volume paper. So for here, if you want to personalize it, like I did on this one, you can put a name in there, and I will show you how to do that right now. 
back to my screen. I'm going to select text. And I think I'll do this one for my daughter. So I'm going to type out her name, Dakota. And I'm just going to drag it down here so it's a little bit easier to see. And up at the top where there's fonts, you click that down arrow and it will show you all the fonts that are there. You, I'm going to click on System. Try again. Click on System. There we go. And pick a scripty font. You'll need all the letters to stick together, so that one's not going to do. You'll need a script font, or you'll need to move the letters of a different font closer together. Now I'm frozen. There we go. Let's see. I also want to choose kind of a thicker font. Because a thin one will be easier to tear. This one will work. It is called Happy Fishing. So I will link this font to you down below if you want to use it. And then I am going, first I want to show you one thing. Let me change this color to light yellow. You can see here, Cricut now, they didn't used to do this, but they now put all the letters nice and together for us. However, you see that little line right there? Cricut will still cut that line. So when you're doing a script font, the first thing you need to do is come down here and click the weld button. And then you'll see that line disappear. That means it's all cut as one continuous cut. So then I'm just kind of going to arrange. You need the left side of the name to touch the left side of here and you need the right side to touch here. It has to be attached to the stocking. You can use this little arrow button if you want to change um, the slant on it so you go more into the stocking that is fine now I'm going to come up and change the color it will show you the material colors on the top to the red so I can kind of just see what it would look like when it is cut to see if I like that placement once you are happy with it you're going to select both that outer stocking and the name and we're going to come down here and weld again and that will keep it attached to the outside and it's now all one continuous cut. So if you want to add a name that's totally optional that is how you do it and then once we are ready we're going to come over I need to change I'm using my maker today so I'm going to change it to my Cricut maker you can totally make this on the Explorer though and click the make it button it's showing us it's going to cut white first which is the topper remember pink is the volume paper and then the stocking and the outer part of the stocking so everything looks good I'm going to go back up here and make sure to choose mat one so it starts on mat one click the continue button if you have a Cricut Explorer, you can turn your dial to cardstock. If you have a Cricut Maker, mine is getting ready. It's trying. I have it on. It always takes a hot minute to connect. But once it's connected, I'm going to type in where it says Browse Materials. I'm going to type in um, cardstock and it gives you the options on the weight. They do have a 65 pound cardstock option or an 80 pound cardstock option. Here we go, I might even have them favorited. Yes, I have the medium cardstock favorited. So if you search cardstock, you will see the different pounds. Make sure you select the right one for what you're doing. And now we are ready to go. Fine point blade is loaded, so let me switch my screen again. Let's go to my overhead camera. You want to make sure when you're cutting cardstock that your mat is fairly clean. You can see I have a little dot here, um, leftover paper from an old project. If you have dirt and stuff on it, it could not, it might not give you a very clean cut if it has stuff underneath it. Starting with white, I just somehow picked up another piece of paper. 
And I'm just going to line my cardstock up in the top left corner and smooth it down. Another thing you want to do if you cut a lot, I'm going to pop my blade out. It's just to make sure your blade is clean. And to do that, I'm going to depress my blunt plunger on the end here and stab it into foil sometime, if there, uh, several times. If there's gunk, um, bits of paper, or just blue residue from cutting vinyl or glitter tends to get stuck on there a lot. It can also tear your paper. So before I cut paper, I like to make sure my blade is nice and clean. Now I'm going to attempt to get it back in there. Okay. And then I'm going to load my mat by sticking it under the two white tabs, which you can't see because my head's in the way. There we go. Under these two light white tabs, push it up against the roller bar and click that flashing arrow button to load your mat. And then the C Cricut button will start flashing. We're going to press that so it cuts it. I'm going to go through and cut all these layers and then I will be back to show you things a little loud. I'll be back to show you how to assemble our stacking. Okay, the white is cut and I loaded my Valiant paper on here and I realized I just wanted to show you real quick how to change because we're going from 80 pound cardstock to Valium paper. So in, when you're in the middle of a project and you need to change it, click this little arrow button right down here and it brings you back to the materials. So we can browse all materials. Looking to see how to spell it with an E. Type in Volume. Hit return and it brings it up. It's, there we go. <laughs> That's the one I want to select. There we go. It's selected. And then click Done. And it will change your materials to that. So then after the volume cuts, we will go back and change it back to our heavy duty cardstock. So there's a tip for you when you are changing in between changing materials for one project. Okay, Cricut is done cutting my last mat, so I'm going to go ahead and unload it. And to get paper off, it's easier to flip your mat over and kind of peel your mat back. You don't want to bend your mat and break it, but if you just peel it back slowly, it keeps your paper from curling up, and then you can save your scraps for another project. It's nice and flat. And then to get these extra bits off, I just take my scraper tool, fling it over it, and then remember to put your protective cover back on. Get that out of the way. Then we are just going to work and pop. Sometimes words get tangled up, so we need to pop the scraps on out of here. and all the centers of your letters also. Looks like I got them all. So now we are ready to assemble. One thing I forgot to mention that you're gonna need um, is some craft glue. I like to use Eileen's quick dry tacky glue. So we're gonna start with the base and our craft foam tape. This is double sided. So I'm going to just go around the edge. And you might need to cut so you can get the corners. There's one side. Let's do the easy flat sides first.
then I'm just, we might have to come back with scissors and cut those creases, but I'm just going to round the stocking with my foam tape. I'm trying to keep it close to the edge. Should have went down with the other one farther in the corner. Once it's down there, you can come back and trim up some of the overlaps. And if you need to, like right here, make a cut. Might be easier to cut after we get the tape off. And cut little notches where it went around. Then I'm going to remove the tape from the top. Better see how oh, we got one more to go. See a little bit better. Any places you might need to trim up. Of course, then it wants to stick to your scissors, but hey, come off of there. one doesn't have to be perfectly flat but get some of the big bumps out and then this is where you want to add your just spelt my green um where's it coming out a little bit of your glitter or confetti or whatever it is you have in there just add to the center I'm going to add some of each. I think I need a little more green. <laughs> or a lot more green. Either way. <laughs> Once it's in there, next goes the volume layer. And we're going. I'm going to line it up on the bottom. And then the rest should line up nice and easy. Can see it shake in there and then this is where we're going to need the glue because we're going to need to glue this top layer on so I'm going to go around to the outside on there and then I might just hit a couple spots on the letters so that they get glued down too that cute and then our top to the stocking there's a hole there if you want to hang it I'm just gonna go across on here so I know I don't get any extra glue and then glue that piece down take your piece of twine Stick it through the hole and then tie it off. The last thing you may want to do that's totally optional. My fingers are so cold they're not wanting to work. Okay, make a knot. And then I'm just going to trim the edges off of it. So it's ready to hang. You'll notice you also have some strips in this file. If you want to go back around and clean up the edges and make it look nice, you can just add some glue
down the edge and add glue these strips on. It really is easier than I'm making it look. <laughs> there we go. With tacky glue, it dries pretty quick. And I made these strips to mostly fit eight and a half by 11 paper um, because that's what I had on hand. It did go off the edge of the paper, but that's fine. But that's why you have two strips. Once this one sticks, I will add the next one. You have two strips because I knew one wouldn't go around all the way. So I'm gonna hold that and see if I can add glue to do the next one. This is usually pretty quick drying. Maybe in this case, hot glue will work. There, it stayed that time. I just need a little more patience. The top is covered, so there's not really a need to go around the top. You can if you want to, but I'm just gonna trim that piece off and then it is done. So we have a cute little shaker name stocking that you can hang on your Christmas tree or these would also make um, great cute gift tags to put on your gifts too. Thank you so much for watching. I, once again, my name is Chris with Daily Dose of DIY. Be sure to like and subscribe for more fun Cricut crafts. We're doing the 12 days of Cricut Christmas crafts and you don't want to miss any of them. We'll see you tomorrow.